Good evening, and welcome to the Cleveland Photographic Society's meeting for September the 4th, 2020. Tonight we have a black and white and pictorial competition for you, but before we get started, I'm going to turn things over to Mike Kopkis, our president, and he'll share a couple of announcements with us. Again, I'd like to uh, welcome you to tonight's competition. Uh, some announcements of upcoming events. Uh, we have a speaker lined up for September 11th next week, and that's Chris Camino, and his um, presentation is entitled Behind the Eyes of Strangers. Uh, upcoming competitions, we have a B competition on September 18th. I want to remind you that the deadline for that is September 9th, uh, so, you know, get your photos in quickly. And then uh, September 25th, uh, we have a nature and pictorial competition, and the deadline for that is September 16th. Uh, we have begun virtual classes. The fundamentals of good photography started on September 2nd and will run for 12 weeks. On September 12th, we'll begin the intro to Photoshop editing, and that'll go for five uh, Saturdays. And then on September 14th, we begin the Lightroom Classic class and that goes for six Monday nights. I also want to uh, call your attention to uh, face masks. We have uh, contact contracted a company to provide CPS branded face masks at $10 a piece. We do need to uh, have the orders in by September 15th and the entry form can be found in the weekly snapshot. Uh, there are details on these events and all other events can be found on our web calendar and on our website, www.clevelandphoto.org. And then we want to remind you, you can watch this and all Friday evening meetings at your convenience on our CPS YouTube channel. The link is on the CPS website homepage, or if you open YouTube and search for Cleveland Photographic, Cleave Photographic, uh, you will find um, our videos there. Uh, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and choose to be notified whenever a new video is posted. So those are our announcements for tonight. Thanks, Mike. Again, welcome. This is our first black and white competition for the 2020-2021 year. Uh, tonight we have 117 images, so a good turnout, 64 black and white and 53 pictorial. Here's a little rundown on our judges for the evening. Our judges are not here with us, uh, but they did uh, view the images and, and comment on, on them from home. So our first judge is Joe Applebaum. Joe is a retired photography and art teacher who spent most of his career at the Brexville Broadview <laughs> Heights High School. During one year, he realized he had examined about 50,000 images on proof sheets. This was obviously before uh, digital. He's spent a career trying to help students understand what makes a photograph good. He has several students who are now working in the field, including some who have had their journalism images presented in the New York Times. One student was also recognized for her video work on The Deadliest Catch. He's been a photographer for 40 years, participating in many shows and contests, and he's shot weddings, parties, and portraits for years. Our second judge is Herb Asherman one of Cleveland's pre preeminent black and white portrait photographers. He works with an eight by 10 view camera and film, printing his subjects in the resurgent art of handmade platinum. In addition to his work as an historian, writer, and editor, Asherman is the founder and director of the Cleveland Photographic Workshop and a sponsor of the, of the 2020, 20, uh, 2021 Cleveland Photo Fest. Our last judge this evening is Steve Manchuk, he became interested in photography through his childhood friend and frequent CPS judge, Glenn Petranik. He bought his first camera in 1967 and soon after set up a home darkroom. In 1973, he attended the Naval School of Photography and spent four years in the Navy as an aerial recon photographer. Beginning in 1977, he spent more than a decade working as a part-time wedding, school portrait, and commercial photographer. He bought his first digital camera in May 2000. He and Glenn Petranik assembled a slideshow of digital works and became advocates of digital photography. The majority of Manchik's work is from Northeast Ohio, though his favorite away from home destination is, is New England. So those are our judges for the evening. Um, 
Each of the uh, judge's comments will be read by our own CPS members. Um, Joe Applebaum will be read by Bill Keaton. Herb Asherman will be read by Dave Siborik. Steve, uh, Steve Manchik will be read by Mike Kopkis. For those of you unfamiliar with how our competitions work, our judging criteria is such. Each judge scores an image on a scale of five to nine. The, total, the final score for each image is the total of all three judges' scores. And the images are judged on three criteria, up to three points per, uh, per item. And those criteria are impact, composition, and technique. A perfect score would be a, 20, a 27. We get those rarely uh, because uh, it's hard for three judges to agree on a, on a perfect score. Uh, when, those are, uh, when those do occur, we make a big deal out of it and the uh, uh, photographer receives a special ribbon noting the fact that they had a perfect score image. We'll have to wait and see if uh, there are any of those uh, perfect scores this evening. So we're going to start with the black and white portion of the evening's competition, and we're going to start with the, with the no comment images. Um, Bill, are there no comment images in black and white? Uh, we're commenting on all black and white Okay, I am told that we're, ca we're commenting on all the black and white images for the evening. Uh, some of the pictorial images will uh, not be commented upon, and the images that were, uh, were chosen to be commented upon were chosen by the photographers themselves. So our first image in black and white. Joe says this is a nice image with great contrast and decent composition. But I think it would have been a better as a square photo as there is too much foreground. The photographer is Dennis Wirt. The title is Abandoned Grain Elevator, 20 points. Herbert says the portrait needs to be centered. There's no discernible reason why it's off kilter to the right. Otherwise, the portrait's well seen and well lit. And with the contrast of her complex dress design to the softness of her, of her face, an interesting composition. The photographer is Kathy Amari. The title of the image is Ashley, 20 points. Steve says, I like the harsh display of patterns. As an improvement, I would suggest darkening the brighter foreground metal a bit. The image is by David Burns. It's entitled B and O Bridge Cleveland Flats, 19 points. The subject was interesting, Joe said. It looks like infrared to me and that was especially mine in film. This is a little blown out in the whites and the shadows are a bit too dark. Too much information to make the image interesting enough. Too much railing and it is shot too straight on. Explore more angles approaching the object. Photograph is by Gary Marich. It's entitled Bay Horse Ghost Town, Chalice, Idaho, Ford Model TT. 17 points. Herbert says, some pictures are meant to be in color, the color being elemental to the success of the image. I'm sure the photographer had design in mind when making this image, but it doesn't translate to me, the viewer. Photograph is by Belinda Prinz. It's entitled Black Swallowtail, 20 points. Steve says, an interesting study of the metalsmith's tools, only a bit static due to the furnace placement in almost dead center. Still an effective and calming display. The image is by Richard Ader. It's entitled Blacksmith's Table. 21 points, honorable mention. Joe says, great image. I usually prefer the subject looking at us, but this one works great looking away. Crisp focus, very good contrast, but the lights might have been blown out just a bit. The 
The photographer is Bill Keaton. The title is Braids, 22 points, honorable mention. Herb says, I will admit that the black and white rendering of the image makes for a very dramatic presentation. I have never quite visualized a butterfly in quite this manner. The photographer is Dave Siborek. The title is Bra A Butterfly Covered with Dew, 19 points. Steve says, I like the intent here. I would go for lighter tones on the petals to make this a high key image, make them more translucent. The image is by Nancy Kakelik. It's called Kella Grace, 22 points, honorable mention. Very nice image, Joe says. The chair is interesting and the shadow on it works very well too. I might have come in a bit the C in the left fights with the chair of focus. The photographer is Glenn Petranic. Chair shadow, 24 points, second place. A picture of a picture. Nice for a travel souvenir, not terribly effective as a singular out-of-context image. The photographer is Bonnie Luxo. The image is entitled, Crime Does Pay, 16 points. Steve says, stark, sad, lonely, doomsday kind of image. With the black shadows, the mood implied is even more ominous. The photographer is Omar Jeffries. Denison for lease. 22 points, honorable mention. Joe says a nice symmetrical image, good patterns, but there needs to be more of a focal point. Looks a little too sharpened. The photographer is Donna Schneider. The image is entitled Doge's Portico. 22 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment is, I am at a loss to understand the motivation behind this image. Is it a statement, documentary, inventory? There's no clue as to the visual why and wherefore the image was taken. The light in the left corner is very distracting. The image is by Michael Halper. It's entitled, Dressed, 16 points. Steve says, the use of negative space is effective, but might be a little too much space. Shaving just a bit off the top and right might help. The hot area on the far left is mildly distracting. The photographer is Cheryl Kelly. It's entitled Fallen Feather, 18 points. Great photo of a flamingo, Joe says, but I would darken some of the highlights and lighten the beak just a bit. Nice use of the background. The image is by Mike Kopkis. It's entitled Flamingo Eye, 19 points. Herb says, the image needs more contrast among the leaves. The picture is flat and indistinct leaving the viewer wondering the purpose of the image. The photographer is Dan Lester. It's entitled Garden Calla Lily, 17 points. Steve says, gives, gives a good relaxed emotion, although the image lacks sharpness, which hurts it a bit. Good composition. The image is by Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Grapes on the Vine, 21 points, honorable mention. Joe says, got the lion, maybe a bit too much contrast. Photographing zoo animals takes a lot of patience, especially with an animal that doesn't move much. I think I would have waited for him to open his eyes more. 
The photographer is Mike Kopkis. It's entitled Haughty, 21 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment is nicely done. Well framed and well balanced, the long exposure invites an aura of calmness and tranquility. The photographer is Omar Jeffries. It's entitled Headlands Pier. 21 points, honorable mention. Steve says, a hint of mystery, but not enough to hide the identity of this everyday object. Clever composition and low key presentation. Both are helpful to make a boring object just a bit more interesting. The image is by Michael Halper. It's entitled Impregnable, 17 points. Joe says, this is a good image and it looks like infrared to me, which is a good thing to try. I like how you captured the tree and it's how it stands out from the rest. The photographer is Jane Sidney. It's entitled Joshua Tree, 20 points. Herb's comment is way too contrasty, too photoshopped. The application of digital effects can enhance the image in some but not all situations. The photographer should be conscious of his image as it stands rather than trying to add unnecessary enhancements. The image is by Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled Kirby's Bridge, 20 points. Steve says, interesting subject in repose, which makes it a bit static overall. The unfortunate combination of flat lighting and tones that mesh makes this image contrast flat overall. The photographer is Robert Boyle. It's entitled Leapin' Lizards, 19 points. Great image, Joe says. Lighting and the water is cool. But I don't really like them both looking at us and I tend to prefer people looking at the viewer. But here I want them to be involved with each other. I would like them not involved with the audience, but more with each other. The photographer is Susan Bestel. It's entitled, Let It Rain. 25 points, first place. Herb says, the image harkens back to see the work of Winston Link, who invented this style of nighttime train photography in the early 1950s. He printed his image as big to enhance the details of the train and the people he captured. Nicely done. The photographer is Rick Carell. It's entitled Letting Off Steam, 23 points, third place. Steve says, good lighting and a willing diminutive subject, obviously. The missing second eye is a bit unfortunate and the severed arm as well. Tighter cropping of the arm and lower torso might help here. The photographer is Kim Wasileski. It's entitled Little Diva, 21 points, honorable mention. Joe says, technically a very well done photo, but that technically can be done now by a lot of people, and I don't know what shows your vision, what makes this special or different. The image is by Kathy Yamari. It's entitled Lunar Vision. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb says, I don't feel any communication between the photographer and the subject. It seems like a point and shoot kind of portrait that carries no emotional content. The photographer is Richard Ader. It's entitled Man on a Tractor. 21 points, honorable mention. Steve says, a moment captured that tells a story instantly. Good timing too would suggest pumping up the contrast in the shadow areas to avoid the dark grays 
merging with the shadow areas. Photographer is Fran Marino. It's entitled Mike and Mom's Last Dance. 20 points. Nice image of mushrooms, Joe says, approached in an interesting way. Good contrast, maybe dodge a bit on the tall mushroom stem and some of the other mushrooms. The photographer is Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Mushroom Family. 22 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment, very powerful storm cloud. Would be more impactful if it was cropped off the right side about two inches. The image is by Susan Mahorchik. It's entitled Naples Beach. 22 points, honorable mention. Steve says, awesome lighting and composition. From an exposure standpoint, this really delivers very well. Suggest cropping only a bit of the right side. The photographer is Jackie Sieski. It's entitled Netting Minnows. 25 points, first place. Joe says, interesting old train cars, but you cut off the top and too close to the bottom. Maybe being down a bit instead of standing would help the composition. Also, there's a bit too much contrast. The photographer is Salvatore Germano. Germano. It's entitled, Nowhere to Go, 20 points. Herb's comment, overly photoshopped, unnecessarily contrasty for an effect, which heavily distracts from the image. Portraits of this nature traditionally had a somewhat low contrast tonal range, which enhanced the motion of the portrait. The image, is, the image is by Wayne Feuerstein, North and South, 19 points. Steve says, this image has potential, but it requires some judicial cropping of the lower third of the frame. The dark areas need some brightening to avoid blocking the shadows completely. Moving in and using a wider lens might have helped as well. The photographer is Eric Wethington. It's entitled Pandemic Empty Lot. 16 points. Queen Anne's Lace is a very cool flower, Joe says, and this is a great of amount of it caught together but it fights for dominance. I think you should consider picking a smaller area and have the focal point be easier defined. The photographer is Jane Sidney. It's entitled Queen Anne's Lace, 20 points. Herb says, bright, sharp, contrasty, and nicely translated into black and white. Crop the entire right side of the picture behind the flower. The right side is too distracting from the intensity of the central image. The image is by Salvatore Germano. It's entitled Sunflower, 19 points. Steve says, I like the lighting and pose. The frame could be cropped tighter. I might even suggest cropping out the knees completely and much of the white bordering areas. The heavy white border darkens the skin when viewing. The photographer is Jackie Sieski. It's entitled That Face. 21 points, honorable mention. Great image, Joe says, and very well composed. I like having the chair on the other side away from the destroyed ceiling. The only thing is, the whites look a little bit blown out. The photographer is Glenn Petranic. It's entitled The Asylum. 23 points, third place. Herb's comment. A record shot, good for a lecture or catalog. Unsuccessful as a standalone image. 
entirely out of context. The image is by Marge Brady. It's entitled The Old Engine, 18 points. Steve says, interesting placement of a soft white object harshly lit against a black backdrop. The negative space is excessive and the lighting on the feather is good, but sharpness needs a boost. Would like to see the subject a bit larger to appreciate its details. The photographer is Darla Zajac. It's entitled The Sailing Feather. 21 points, honorable mention. Nice repetition of image, Joe says, and good quality of values, white to black. Maybe cut some from the right and bottom where there's too much space away from where they are pointing. The photographer is Robert Boyle. It's entitled Three on Each Side. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment. I would have waited that extra microsecond for the couple to line up exactly with the reflection of the sunset. The fact that they were off center detracts from the overall composition. The image is by Fran Marino. The title is A Walk With My Sweetheart, 19 points. Steve says, very simple subject in flight with great lighting, tack sharp. In its simplicity, it can be appreciated. An improved version would suggest a more interesting backdrop, including clouds, possibly. The photographer is David Burns. It's entitled Barn Swallow. 21 points, honorable mention. Great close-up of a bee, Joe says, but it's hard to do macro and have the right part in focus. This should have had his eye in focus. The image is by Belinda Prins. It's entitled Bumblebee on Coneflower, 19 points. Herb's comment, studio flower shot. Nicely done, but I've seen it before. The question is, how do you make this photograph stand out from the others like it? The photographer is Dave Saboric. It's entitled Carnation, 19 points. Steve says, common theme, calm mood, good exposure and sharpness. The wide angle view here might not be the best as everything has equal weight and small details. For added int interest, a longer lens would still include the track and trees with larger mass. As taken, a panorama of the upper half is even an option. The photographer is Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled Cold Rails, 22 points, honorable mention. Joe says a great capture of the moment. Nice tonal range of whites to black. Maybe bringing the whites down just a bit in the splash would help. The photographer is Cheryl Kelly. It's entitled Crashing Wave. 22 points, honorable mention. Herb's comments, hands and face make the portrait. Truncated arms do nothing but distract from the power of the image. Cross his arms on his chest, or put a hand on the back of a chair. Do something. Overly photoshopped images for affectation distract from the emotional content of the portrait. The image is by D. Riley. It's entitled Dale, 18 points. Steve says, bright highlights, almost blown out, but thankfully not, and a fun moment <clears throat> with mother and child. The child's right leg is giving mom an undeserved fat belly at first glance, an unfortunate merge, would crop the top third favoring a panorama. The image is by Susan Mahorchik. It's entitled, Difference of Opinion, 19 points. 
Good portrait, Joe says. Exotic looking because of the costume. I am a little distracted by what looks like a pirate to her left. The whites need to be brought down a bit. The photographer is Darla Zajac. It's entitled Flawless Beauty. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb says, the lamppost on the left side saves the image. I find it quite humorous, actually, just standing there by itself. The photographer is Bonnie Luxo, framed <clears throat> in rain, 19 points. Steve says, nice formations and composition that would benefit from some actual white tones. This would really make the details of the ice pop. The foreground appears out of focus, but may not hurt it uh, once the whites are restored. The photographer is Mike Lonsdale. It's entitled Frozen 3, 16 points. Awesome capture, Joe says. Great set and lighting. I don't think I would do much to change this other than bring the whites down just a bit. The photographer is Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Girl in Hoops 6, BW. 23 points, third place. Oops. Herb's comment. Cropping up about an inch from the bottom enhances the drama of the sea and the sky. The black line of the jetty is distracting. It cuts the photo in half. The image is by Rick Carell. Grand Marias Harbor, 21 points, honorable mention. Steve says, a street scene that implies an old city and a busy group of tourists. Good angle. To improve, I would crop the right side to allow the big arch to move off center. Additionally, the people and building in shadow could use a selective contrast boost. The photographer is Elda Baroni, Milano Galleria, 20 points. A basic photo of an old car headlight, Joe says. Maybe have more on the left, it fights a bit with the hood, and it needs more contrast. The photographer is Dan Lester. It's entitled Old Car Light, 18 points. Herb says the composition would be much more interesting if the image was cropped, cropped about an inch in from the right. A lot of dead space which detracts from the intricacies of the valve work. The photographer is Gary Marich. It's entitled Reading Railroad's Locomotive 2100 Boiler Valves, 19 points. Steve says, headshots like this are always reflective in their mood. This one is no exception. The placement of the eyes is good and the background bokeh is excellent. The photographer is Bill Keaton. Thai Farm women, Woman, 22 points, honorable mention. Joe says, a nice graphic image, good tonal range. The problem is that there isn't enough on the top. It's too close at the point where it would be better to see some more black there. The photographer is Nancy Kakelik. It's entitled Toronto Geometrics. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment, way too high contrast. The models lost in the burst of the sunlight and the visual confusion of the tree branches. The image is by Susan Bestel. It's entitled Tree Dancer, 18 points. Steve says, repetitive images or patterns are always fair game. These assorted faces of stone seem all too real. 
a good subject for black and white. The photographer is Kim Wasileski. It's entitled Visages, 20 points. Joe says, a very nice image of the waterfall and water. I like how it comes around the corner and comes towards us. There's a bit too much contrast and the whites should be brought down just a bit. The photographer is Dennis Wirt. It's entitled Waterworks, 21 points, honorable mention. That concludes the black and white portion of our uh, competition this evening. We're now going to move into pictorial. We'll start with the no, no comment images where we'll show the picture, read the photographer, the title, and the score, and then we will move to the images uh, with, which have judges' comments. First image is by Mike Lonsdale. Hi, I'm Stinking Benjamin. 19 points. Next image is also by Mike Lonsdale, After the Storm, 21 points, honorable mention. This image is by Ron Worman, Atlanta Building Reflection, 21 points, honorable mention. Photographer is David Burns. It's entitled Baby Duck. 19 points. This image is by Terry Martin. It's entitled Badass Bighorns. 24 points, first place. This image is by Kathleen Amari, B on Orange Flower, 21 points, honorable mention. Photographer is Nancy Kakelik. It's entitled Big Sable Lighthouse, 20 points. Photographer is Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Cannon Beach Sunset. 24 points, first place. The image is by Belinda Prinz. Dandelion and Friends, 19 points. The photographer is Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled Deep Lock 28. 21 points, honorable mention. The photographer is Cheryl Kelly. It's entitled Ferris Wheel on Lake Erie. 20 points. Dennis Wirt, Glacier Reflection, 21 points, honorable mention. The photographer is Terry Martin. It's entitled Homecoming, 24 points, first place. The image is by D. Riley, Jefferson Depot, old and new, 19 points. The photographer is Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Las Vegas 33, 21 points, honorable mention.
The image is by Gary Marich. It's entitled Limber Pine, Craters of the Moon, Idaho, 18 points. The photographer is Kathleen Amari. It's entitled Majestic Monarch, 20 points. The photographer is Susan Mahorchik. It's entitled No Complaints, 21 points, honorable mention. Photographer is Dave Siborek. It's entitled Orange on Blue. 20 points. The image is by Fran Marino. It's entitled Pass the Fork, Please. 20 points. Photographer is Cindy Johnson. It's entitled Peekaboo Wasp, 19 points. The photographer is Susan Bestel. Pienza Cathedral, 1462, 19 points. The image is by D. Riley. It's entitled Remains, 19 points. Photographer is Donna Schneider. Ricketts Glen Waterfall, 22 points, third place. Photographer is Bonnie Luxo, Rooted Lake View, 17 points. The image is by Ron Worman, Rudbeckia in Ice, 20 points. Darla Zajac, searching for the perfect photo op, 18 points. The image is by Rick Mills. It's entitled Splash South Haven, 22 points, third place. Also by Rick Mills, Still Water, 23 points, second place. The photographer is Kim Wasileski. This city is our stage, 21 points, honorable mention. The image is by Bill Keaton. It's entitled The Duck House. 21 points, honorable mention. The photographer is Rick Carell. It's entitled The Prize. 19 points. The photographer is Elda Baroni. It's entitled Venice Gondolier. 20 points. The image is by Cindy Johnson. 
Webworm Moth, 20 points. That concludes the no comment portion of the pictorial competition. We'll now move to commented images with the next image. Okay, Herb commented on this one. Very well seen and beautifully composed. A perfect example of a prepared eye and mind being at the right place at the right time would make a great Cleveland poster. I actually saw this guy on a different day. He is certifiably nuts. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> the photographer is Mick Russo. It's entitled A Little Flight Over Edgewater. 23 points, second place. Steve says, great contrast of foreground and background patterns complementing each other. A symphony for the eyes that works very well. Using the landscape mode for this presentation makes the busy image more relaxing. The photographer is Marge Brady. It's entitled Aloft. 22 points, third place. Nice image of an Amish man, Joe says. Not sure if I like the border put around it. The sneer on his face is a bit bothersome. I think I would have preferred him looking at us. Focus and depth of field is very good. The image is by Richard Ader. It's entitled Amish Man 4. 22 points, third place. Herb says, nice image if you're collecting insects. As far as a piece of artwork, it's been done over and over. The photographer is Salvatore Germano. It's entitled B, 19 points. Steve says, color wheel at work in this image. Yellow and blue hues work well together in a frame. The yellow projects powerfully while the blue background makes a proper restful base to anchor the composition. The photographer is Marge Brady. It's entitled Clematis. 21 points, honorable mention. A great disturbing image of dolls, Joe says. Nicely placed white doll in front of the red. Might like to see the doll's hands. I'm a bit bothered by them being cut off where they are. Photographer is Glenn Petranic. It's entitled Creepy Dolls. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb says, probably one of the best uses of Photoshop I've seen in a while. Perfect use of balance, color, compositional elements, and a fascinating idea. Congratulations. The photographer is Jackie Sayeski. It's entitled Dancing Without Boundaries. 24 points, first place. Steve says, a moment of observation captured as this duckling grabs a quick snack. Capture the moment well and the long lens keeps the framed subject in sharp registration with no near or far distractions. The yellow and blue palette always works well together. The image is by Kathleen Amari. Amari. It is entitled Graveyard Gosling, 21 points. Honorable mention. Joe says, a great catch of a hummingbird at a cardinal flower. Good exposure, composition, and moment. Maybe get a little bit more detail in the red highlights. The photographer is Donna Schneider. It's entitled Hummingbird. 23 points, second place. Herb's comment, this is a gorgeous moment in nature. Perfect color and visual balance. Great shot. Good eye. Congratulations. The photographer is Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Hummingbird Anticipation. 23 points, second place. 
Steve says, a bird on the prowl that is rendered in sufficient focus and exposed well. The cropping seems a bit tight. It is good with small objects or creatures to leave a bit more space, at least above it, for scale reference. The shallow focus does separate it well from its surroundings, which could be distracting in sharp focus. The photographer is Rick Mills, Little Green Heron, 18 points. Joe says, great capture of the lighthouse and the angle that you got the log from was very good. Good choice to take it from a low angle, maybe dodge the rocks just a bit. The image is by Omar Jeffries. It's entitled Marblehead Sunrise. 22 points, third place. Rick, Herb's comment. The simplest designs in nature's are also the most complex. I don't get much on the emotional end of the image, but I find the co complex composition is interesting. The photographer is Robert Boyle. It's entitled Moss, Roots, and Leaves. 18 points. Steve says, an image in action. This flower almost moves when viewing it. Off-centering the flower helps to avoid a more static presentation. This flower is just enough off-center to avoid the bullseye effect. The photographer is Kathy Yamari. It's entitled Pink and Gold Dahlia. 20 points. Joe says an interesting attempt to get a pictorial image, but flowers fit in that pretty much on their own. The problem with this is that it doesn't make the flower more interesting. It loses its focal point with nothing being in focus. The photographer is Ron Worman. It's entitled Rotating Flowers, 17 points. Herb's comment. Very simple, minimalist, and almost monotonic composition. I assume that I'm looking at sand dunes but have no visual proof as to the fact. Very quiet moment rendered in its natural and balanced beauty. The image is by Jane Sidney. It's entitled Silence, 19 points. Steve says, the moment of impact was captured well. The tight panoramic crop is interesting. It might help to add a bit more space above the subjects to give some breathing room. I would like to have seen a flailing arm or two to add to the drama. The photographer is Michael Helper. It's entitled Stubborn Sheep, 19 points. Joe says a pretty cool old workshop, a bit too centered for me. Also wish the blue wasn't so pronounced. It looks too adjusted. The photographer is Mike Kopkis. It's entitled Swing Spouts. 21 points, honorable mention. Herb's comment. Perfect moment. You can almost hear him chuckling about a recent flight over a nudist colony. Very humorous. The photographer is Terry Martin. It's entitled The Art of Juggling Seafood. 21 points, honorable mention. That concludes tonight's competition. If you want uh, some more information about competing or how to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, we ask you to visit our website, www.clevelandphoto.org. Want to thanks to send thank, thanks to all of our judges and also to our readers this evening. And especially thanks to all of you who entered, and congratulations to all of our winners. Um, we appreciate uh, all of your entries, and we appreciate. We also appreciate your feedback. So please uh, send us your comments at to info at Cleveland Photo. Dot org. That's it for tonight. We ask you to join us again next week uh, when we'll have cr our own Chris Camino uh, talking to us about Behind the Eyes of Strangers. It's an excellent presentation. We hope you'll tune in. 
Thank you so very much. We'll see you again next week.